I'm just gonna let I'm just gonna let it run for just a second. Let some people okay. see if we can get some people on first. <laughs> Good morning. Is anybody there? Is it time? Mm hmm. <laughs> I like your dress. It's so beautiful. Thanks. Okay. Well, we'll just go ahead and start. All right. Good morning, everyone out there in Facebook land. And good morning, Kennedy. Would you like to wave to everyone? We're glad to see you this stormy, stormy Sunday morning. I'm glad you made it because I was wondering with all the storms if we'd be able to. Then I woke up in the morning. This morning, I dreamed last night that it was storming so bad that the power went off and that we couldn't do our old thing. So I'm glad that God allowed us to have this beautiful weather so we can do that. Um, before we get started really with our story, I want to do a little magic trick. Do you like magic tricks? <laughs> okay. Um, and this one, I've got a, got a little, can you see it? Toothpick? Okay. Now I'm gonna make this toothpick disappear. Do you think I can do that? Oh, you got a lot of faith in me, don't you? <laughs> okay, let's say a magic word. Abra, cadabra, where'd it go? Uh, let's see if I can make it come back. Abracadabra. There it is. <laughs> and I'm going to explain to you how I did this magic trick at the end of our story. But right now, I want you to think about um, the events last week. We talked about um, Easter. Did you get to watch it last week? Yeah. Okay, and you know from what we've talked about that Jesus... When he was resurrected, he appeared to several different people. And um, the first people that he appeared to were the women who came to the tomb. And they were going to anoint his body with spices. Because remember we talked about that's how they did that. They wrapped the body up in white cloth and they put spices on it. And they didn't bury him in the ground. They buried him in a tomb. Do you remember what a tomb is? Where would it usually be? Yeah, like in a cave, right? And back in, in a, like a side of a hill or something, they would make a, a tomb and it would be, um, the, the rock would be hewn out so that they would have a little place for the body to lay. It wasn't very big, but that's where they laid Jesus' body. And then do you remember what they put, the um, soldiers put at the door of the tomb? A big stone, right? And that big stone covered it. And they did that. They put the two guards there because they had heard the rumors that Jesus was going to rise from the dead. And so they didn't want anything to happen. They didn't want somebody to come and get his body and move it and then say, oh, Jesus has risen. And so they thought this would be a good way to do that. But what happened in the middle of the night? Do you remember? On Sunday, before Sunday morning? Um, the angel yeah, the angel moved it, and the um, and Jesus came what out of the tomb. That's right, and Jesus was alive and is alive. And so, to prove that to the people that he knew, he appeared to them. And the first people that he appeared to were the women who came. And uh, one time he talked to Mary Magdalene. And he talked to her specifically and told her. And he told her to go and tell the disciples. And then he told the other women. He told them to go tell. And then during that day, there were two men who were disciples of Jesus. They weren't part of the 11, the apostles. But these were two men that were just disciples of Jesus. And they were going to a village about seven miles away from Jerusalem called Emmaus. And so they were walking along, and they come up on this other man. This man starts walking with them. And um, he says, hey, what are y'all talking about? And they said, well, we're just talking about all the stuff that's happened with this prophet Jesus that, you know, was killed and crucified, and we're just really upset about that. 
And he said, I don't, I don't know, what, what, what is that? And you know what they said to him? They said, are you the only person in the world who hasn't heard about this? They were so surprised because everybody had heard about Jesus and how he had been crucified. And they told him, they said, look, he was one of the best prophets we've ever known. He could heal people. He, wrote, he even raised up Lazarus, a friend of ours, from the dead. He did all these miraculous signs, and we just knew he was coming to be the king and to set us free from the Roman rule. And um, so Jesus talked with him for a while. He said, well, let me tell you a few things. And he started way back with Moses, and he told him all the things in the Bible that had pointed to Jesus and who he was. And they didn't know that it was really Jesus. And so God had, had blinded their eyes in that they didn't recognize him. And so they got all the way to Emmaus, and Jesus acted like he was going to, you know, I'm going to go on. And they said, oh, please stay with us. Stay and, and eat with us. So he said, oh, okay. So he went to a house. They sat down. And when Jesus broke bread and gave it to them, just like that, their eyes were open and they realized that it was Jesus. Now this is the same Jesus they've been talking about who had died. And just that instant, he was gone, just vanished. Just like that toothpick, only that was a trick. This wasn't a trick. But just like that toothpick, just, just that quick, Jesus left. And Jesus was back in um, Jerusalem, seven miles away, that quick. Now seven miles is about from here to my house. Have you ever been to my house? You yeah. have. And it's not like right next door. It takes a little while in a car, doesn't it? About 10, 10, 12 minutes. But if I was walking, how long do you think it'd take me? An hour? Yeah, it'd probably take me about an hour. I think sometimes it might take me longer. But Jesus, just that quick, was back in Jerusalem. And so that evening, the disciples are all together, and Jesus, um, had, they were talking about how Jesus had died. They're all in this room together, and they're scared to death because they know that Jesus has been crucified, and they're, they're really worried the Roman um, soldiers are going to come after them. So they locked the door, made sure it was really safe and secure, and so they're in there, and they're very, very sad. And all of a sudden, Jesus is standing right there in front of them. And they were like, whoa. And at first, they think it's a ghost. And Jesus, I'm not a ghost. Come and, come and touch me. See, he said, this is where the nails were in my hands. He said, come and see my side. And they did. And they could touch him. They couldn't believe it. And so then they finally believed that he really was risen from the grave. Because when the women came and told him, they thought, ah, y'all are just delusional. I don't know what you saw, but it couldn't be true. And so Jesus talked to them and spent some time with them and explained some things that were happening, some things that were going to happen. And he stayed with them for quite a while, and then he disappeared again. Now, Jesus didn't come through the door. He didn't knock on the door, and they went and unlocked everything and let him in. So how did he get in there? He just went through the wall. Yes. I mean, he has his new body now. He looked just like himself because they recognized him. They realized who he was. But he had the ability to just walk right through walls. Now, when he was on earth and he was a man like uh, a person like us, could Jesus do that then? No. He was bound by human, his human flesh, his body. But now he has a new body. He has ascended to heaven, and he's back here, and he's talking to the people, and he's doing all these kind of really miraculous things. So it kind of gives us an idea that when we go to heaven and we get our new bodies, maybe our body will be like that. What do you think? Yeah. And when he talked to the disciples before he left, he said, um, well, he told them all that that week. And, you know, remember I told you Thomas wasn't there. The disciple that um, named Thomas wasn't there with the rest of them. But, and so when they told Thomas, he didn't believe them. He said, I, <laughs> I don't believe that. He said, unless I could put my finger in the hole where they nailed him and in his side where the spear went in, I'm not going to believe that he's alive. So the next week, 
same thing happened. They're all gathered together. Now this time they're a little more hopeful because they've seen Jesus and they know he, he has risen. But still Thomas didn't believe them. Well, all of a sudden, boom, there's Jesus right in the middle of them again. And so Thomas went over there and he told her, he said, hey, touch me, I'm real. And so he did, and then Thomas believed. And Jesus said, you are blessed because you've seen me and believed, but even more blessed are those who have never seen me and still believe. Now, have you ever seen Jesus? Mm, neither. But do you believe that Jesus rose from the dead? Yes. And if he walked right through there, we would believe it, but we believe it even though we don't see him. And the Bible says we have something more sure to tell us than just seeing him or just hearing about him or seeing the miracles that the apostles do. What do we have that's more sure? The Bible. The Bible. And we know that everything in this Bible is true, right? And so our story today about the road to Emmaus, they call it, is in all of the Gospels, but in the book of Luke, it tells this story about the, the men on their way to Emmaus and how Jesus met them and talked to them. And did you know after Jesus appeared, um, after he appeared to them, and then um, Luke also tells us that um, at the end, when Jesus had, had been there 40 days. Now, 40 days he had been appearing to people. And some of it's not recorded in the Bible. But he appeared to all of these people. And at one time, he appeared to 500 people at one time. <laughs> the Bible doesn't say a whole lot about it. It just kind of mentions it in passing. But there's a lot of things that happened that week in that 40 days that we don't know. But we do know that Jesus stayed on the earth 40 days and he appeared to different people. He appeared to his, his um, brother, James. You know the book of James in the Bible? Did you know that he was Jesus' biological brother? You know, Jesus had brothers and sisters just like you. You have brothers, right? And James was one of his brothers. And Jesus appeared to him. And then Jesus appeared to Peter. We know that he appeared to Peter. He appeared to those 500 people, whoever they were. He appeared to the women. He appeared to all kinds of people. And some really crazy things were going on during that 40 days. Now, the Bible tells us when Jesus was crucified and he said, it is finished, something really amazing happened at the, um, at the temple where the Jewish people worship. They had a, they called it a veil, but it was a, a thick curtain. It was probably about this thick. And it was very, very tall, a big, long curtain. And it separated the Holy of Holies from the, um, the rest of the synagogue. And so this thick curtain is here, about this thick. And it said, the Bible says that it was just ripped right in two. And it didn't rip from the bottom. It ripped from the top. So you know that somebody didn't go up there with scissors or knife and start cutting it. It didn't happen that way. It came down and it opened up and, and it was to symbolize that now we can go before Jesus. We don't have to go into the Holy of Holies or have a priest do that for us, do we? The Bible says that we can go directly to the throne of God through Jesus Christ because he's our high priest. All right, so when that happened, then, this is really crazy, graves, there was a big earthquake, and gravestones fell over and broke open, and dead people, other people that believed in God, rose from the dead and started walking around and talking. And can you imagine if you were living there, and maybe your grandfather had died, and all of a sudden he's just walking around talking to you? That would be really crazy, wouldn't it? And that's what, so a lot of really amazing things happened during that 40 days. But Jesus said the most important thing is for them to believe that he died, he was raised from the dead, and he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. Now, at the end of that 40 days, his, his disciples, his friends were with him, and they were on the, they said mountain, but probably like a real big hill over by the Sea of Galilee. And so he's there talking to them, and then all of a sudden, the Bible says he was taken up into the clouds. I mean, he just went. 
And before he left, he said, I want you to be my witnesses. And where did he tell them to be witnesses to? Yeah, about him. And he said, I want you to go to Samaria, Judea, the whole world. Go everywhere and tell them that I have risen from the dead and that I am in heaven sitting at the right hand of the Father and that he died for our sins. So when we have missionaries now, we send out to all parts of the world, don't we? And when you give money to the church, part of that money goes to what we call the cooperative program, and that goes to missionaries to preach in all over the world. Another thing that we can do is when he said, it's like um, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And he said, in Samaria, which is a little place, then Judea. And so it's like saying in Wetumpka, in Alabama, the United States, and the whole world. So that's what we are to do, just like he told his disciples to do. That's our job, is to tell other people about Jesus and to explain to them what happened and say, look, there is a way you can be forgiven for your sins. And then you tell them how to do that. Now, when he went up into the clouds, I made this little craft, and I taped it on a cup just so it would sit here, and I've got it. Um, this says, I am looking for Jesus. And the reason it says that is because when Jesus was taken up into the clouds, the disciples were sitting there looking, and they were all, where did he go? Where did he go? They kept looking, and this angel appeared to them, and he said, what are you doing? And he said, why are you looking up here? He's gone. He's gone back to heaven. And he said, but the same way that he left, he's coming again. So how did Jesus leave? Up in what? In the clouds. Yeah, in the heavens. One day, we're going to look up in the sky, and Jesus is going to be coming down from the heavens. Because the Bible says, the angel told us, the same way that he left, he's coming back. And this time he's coming back to get his church. He's coming to get you and me and all the other people in the whole world who believe in him and have been forgiven of their sins. So it's a, it's a great thing to think about when Jesus was here on earth. But it's a great thing to think about when he left. But the best part is thinking he's coming back. Now, his spirit lives here in your heart, doesn't he? If you've accepted Christ and asked forgiveness for your sins, then you have the Spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit, who's part of the Trinity. Remember the Father, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And he's living inside of you and I. And God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit are all three parts of what? I, and I want to look at the Bible verse that we're going to talk about today. And this is from Matthew 28, 20. And before Jesus left, he said, don't be, don't be scared about just because my body's not here with you. He said, behold, I am with you always to the ends of the earth. That's right, the ends of the age. That means he's forever with us. So behold... I am with you always to the end of the age. And that's Matthew 28, 20. Now, I want us to say, um, to say that Bible verse, but we're going to learn part of it in sign language. Now, I'm not very good at sign language, I have to be honest. But I have my friend Jody. she teaches people about, about uh, sign language, people who are deaf and can't hear. So this is just a little bit of stuff that she does and people talk all the time with their hands because they can't hear. Do you ever see like when the emergency thing is on TV and they're talking about big emergencies, they usually have somebody over here and, and that person's um, telling deaf people who can't hear what that person's saying. So first thing I want you to do now, I do have a little problem in that my finger won't stay up. I have a... <laughs> I have always been that way, never been able to do it. But can you do your hand like this and do your little finger up? Okay, now hold it like this. Okay, now put your little finger straight up. Good, see yours will do it. Mine doesn't do it very well. All right, this is the letter I. Okay, I. So we're going to put it close to here. We're going to say, 
I. All right. And so we say, behold, I. Let's do that. Behold, I am with. Now, with looks like this. You take your fist with your thumbs here, and you go with. Okay. Behold, I am with you. And then always, you just kind of put your palm up, point your finger out, and you go like this. Always. So we say, behold, and then we go, I am with you always to the end of the age. Matthew 28, 20. So you've worked on that this week. And if you can't remember, you can go back and look at the video because it's always there, right? And so we can remember that even though Jesus isn't physically with us, he is with us with his Holy Spirit, right? And he is always with us no matter what. And sometimes it's a little scary, like today, it's, it's gonna storm, isn't it? And are you afraid of bad weather? No. Some people get really, really scared of bad weather. I usually don't either. But I have to tell you, last Sunday, I got a little bit afraid last Sunday night because it was really, really stormy. And I could hear limbs cracking. And we have a lot of big trees around our house. And when I heard that, I was like, uh-oh, this is kind of scary. So we don't have to be afraid. Now, we do have to use our good common sense. And when tornado warnings are going on, when he, we hear sirens, what do you do? Do you have to go somewhere safe? There's a place in your house. Your, your mom might say, let's go in the bathroom, get in the bathtub. She might say, um, your dad say, everybody into the hallway. But there's a place in your house where your parents will want you to be that's safe. But you can know today and tonight, no matter how scary the weather is, that Jesus said, Behold, I am with you always. Good. And so we know that Jesus, is, his Holy Spirit is with us always, and we don't have to be afraid. It, it's, it's fun to think it would be cool if Jesus was right here with me all the time, and I could hold his hand and walk around. But we have something better than that, the Bible says. Better than that, we have his Spirit living within us. And better than seeing his miracles is having his word. As Jesus says, I am the word, right? So I want you to think about this week when you're, um, well, tonight, when you're, you might be afraid with the bad weather this afternoon or tonight, but also with all the stuff that's going on with the coronavirus. And um, I know your mom is a nurse. And it's kind of scary when she goes off. You think, you know, I know you worry sometimes about her. But God said he's going to take care of her, doesn't he? And we use our good sense and wear masks and wash our hands and use hand sanitizer and do all the things that we're supposed to do. Then we can trust that God is going to do the best for us. Okay. Thank you so much. Now, do we have anybody here that we can say hello to? Yes. Let's see. Um, Carter is watching. Hey, Carter. And Callan. Callan. Miss Betty Sue. Miss Betty Sue. And um, Jaden and Abigail. Jaden and Abigail. Ooh, Jaden, you got a, a new haircut. I saw it on Facebook. It looks cool. Henry. Henry, yay. I miss you guys. Evelyn. Evelyn. Hi, Evelyn. I haven't seen you in so long. Sydney and Lucas. Sydney. Lucas. And Ella. Sorry. And Ella. Very good. Reese and Renan and Rylan. Hey, Reese, Renan and Rylan. And Miss Gail, Miss Vivian's Ms. on. Yeah, Miss Vivian. We're in Miss Vivian's room, aren't we? And Miss Rhonda Givens, Miss Annette. Miss Annette, hello. Miss Marianne. Miss Trish. Miss Trish is here. Good. Okay. All right. Thank well, you we're guys. So glad you joined us today. And hopefully, it won't be too much longer, and you'll be able to be here in person with us. And we can see each other and be together as a church. And that's going to be a great day, isn't it? Okay. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for your help, for coming, Kennedy. And um, we're going to pray and then we're going to go, okay? Father God, we love you so much. I'm so grateful that we can look at your word and, and read about the things that you did after the resurrection, the way you showed yourself to people. 
But most importantly, Father, we're so thankful for what you did on the cross and how you resurrected our now sitting at the right hand of the Father and that we don't have to go through the Holy of Holies anymore to get to God. We can go through you. Thank you that your Holy Spirit lives within us. Thank you that you take care of us. I pray your continued blessings on us and our church as we go on this week. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Bye. Bye.